I know that's like super known fact, but it still blows my mind every time. I don't know. That seems a little tricky to me. I'm literally spacing out because I'm just like, that's wild. So today we're gonna be checking out a video called 12 Geography Facts About the USA That You Didn't Know. Now I'm not great at geography, so I'm going to assume I don't know a great many of these geography facts or any. Let's see if we can learn together. Before I get into the video, I would be most grateful if you would subscribe to this channel. It's completely free right now for a limited time only. Also leave the thumbs up or leave the thumbs down and bash on your keyboard. Also, if you want to check out my Patreon or channel membership, it's really easy. You just click join or patreon.com backslash Diane Jennings. That's less easy to do, but there are different perks and stuff and things. Oh, be sure to check out the full video in the description box below. It's on the Bright Side channel, an awesome channel with very cool animation education. Oh, check this out. 12 strange US geography facts no, no one, one told, told you, you about. about. The US enjoys some very impressive statistics. 50 states, 325.7 million people, 14,000. I know that's like super known fact, but it still blows my mind every time I come from a country. Five million people, seven million if you include the north of Ireland. Kind of mind blowing. 46 McDonald's restaurants. What? Oh yes, and some truly wacky geography facts. Yes. Get ready because some of these geographic anomalies can be mind boggling. Keep watching to learn which site to visit if you want to be in four places at once. What? How Americans can be trapped in Canada and how everyone on Earth could fit into the state of Texas. Counting down from number 12. Buildings in New York have their own zip codes. What? Manhattan is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. It is so unbelievably crowded that there are over 200 zip codes in Manhattan alone. No way. 40 buildings that are large enough to have their own zip codes. No way. The Empire State Building, the General Motors Building, the Chrysler Building, Park Avenue Plaza, and the MetLife Building are some of the lucky few that can claim their own zip code. That's insane. Number 11. Alaska is everywhere. Alaska is the westernmost, easternmost, and northernmost state. Wait, what? If you look at a two-dimensional map, it makes immediate sense for it to be the westernmost and northernmost. But how could it be the easternmost? Just take a look at the globe. As you can see, Alaska is pretty close to Russia. The state stretches so far west that it reaches into the eastern hemisphere. So if you want to experience the northern, western, and eastern hemispheres, simply head to Alaska. Just make Tricky. sure you bring a really warm jacket. Tricky one. <laughs> Number 10. You can walk from the U.S. to Russia. Walking from California, Oregon, or Washington to Russia would be impossible unless you have magic powers that allow you to walk on water. Mm -hmm. But it's a very real possibility from Alaska. During the winter, the small area between Alaska and Russia freezes <gasps> over. Whoa. In the middle of the Bering Strait are two islands. Big Diomede is part of Russian territory and Little Diomede is part of Alaskan territory. The distance between the two is just 2.4 miles. No way. Technically, you can walk from Little Diomede to Big Diomede or from the US to Russia and tell all your friends about how you visited a... I like this music. Number 9. Canada in California. But what? The population of Canada is 36.7 million. But California still houses more people than the entire country of Canada. California is the most populated state in the U.S. with 39.5 million people. We love California. It's followed by Texas, Florida, and New York in that order. If being around too many people isn't your preference, then Vermont or Wyoming might be for you, as they're some of the least populated states. Number 8. The Longest River in the U.S. Ooh. The Mississippi River spans 2,348 miles. 
that's like the distance from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Boston, Massachusetts. Mississippi is the third largest watershed and the fourth longest river in the world. It would take mm. 90 days for a drop to travel from the beginning of the river to the end. It's that long. And its size isn't the only amazing thing about this river. It's home to 360 species of fish, Whoa. 326 species of birds, 145 species of amphibians, and 50 species of mammals. The river is also the daily source of water for 62 cities in the United States, keeping around 18 million Americans well, well hydrated. hydrated. Mm, gotta stay hydrated. Seven, the shortest river in the world. The U.S. can oh. boast about being home to the fourth longest river in the world, but it also has the smallest. The Roe River is located in Montana, and it's just 201 feet long. It's about one and a quarter times the size of an Olympic swimming pool. Oh, the Guinness World the lake. Records had it down as the shortest river in the world until they discontinued the category. This little river is like a small oasis surrounded by grounds that are perfect for picnicking and rocking views. Number six, the longest coastline. Which state do you think has the longest coastline? Top contenders would be Texas, Florida, and California. Sure, yeah, that would but be my guess. It's Alaska again. Oh no, Alaska, of course. The Alaskan coastline covers 6,640 miles and is actually longer than the coastline for the rest of the states combined. So, if you love the cold sea and frozen beaches, Alaska is the place to be. Number 5. The tallest mountain in the world. Yes, Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world, with an elevation of 29,029 feet above sea level. But technically, the tallest mountain is part of the United States. Mauna Kea in Hawaii is an enormous mountain that's about 33,500 feet tall. So why is Mount Everest considered the tallest and not Mauna Kea? Hmm. It's because half of Mauna Kea is hidden under the sea. Mauna Ooh. Kea is the highest mountain from base to peak. To make things a little more impressive, Mauna Kea is also a dormant volcano which last erupted about oh, 4,000 years ago. Then. Let's just hope this massive volcano... Okay, so fair point on it being a volcano, not a mountain. But if it weren't a volcano and they were just discounting it because it starts under sea level, I don't know. That seems a little tricky to me. Let me know what you think in comments. Should it still qualify as the tallest mountain were it not a volcano? I think that's a little tricky. Number four, Point Roberts. America or Canada? Ooh, controversial. Is United States territory, part of Whatcom County, Washington. The small territory is a geographic anomaly since it can only be accessed by boat from the United States. If you need to go in by land, you'll need to head in through Canada. For Washington residents living there, it must be baffling to live with a Washington zip code in a location that's basically inside British Columbia. That's wild! To attend the nearest high school, students must go through four border crossings. But the residents that's seem exhausting. to like the border crossings as they provide a lot of security. As long as the residents can keep track of whether they're American or Canadian, Point Roberts seems to be a nice, secure place to Very live, secure. if a little inconvenient. A tad inconvenient. Number three, four corners, four states. Well, how can you be in four places at once? Yes, how? Unless you're on a sci-fi show, that would seem like an impossibility. But you can do this in the U.S. Just head over to Four Corners, a rare area in America where four states meet. Southeast Utah, Northeast Arizona, Southwest Colorado, and Northwest New Mexico intersect in a right angle. Thankfully, no strange anomalies occur at this spot, so don't expect any aliens. If you head to Four Corners, feel free to tell your friends you visited those four states. Number two. That's insane. I'm literally spacing out because I'm just like... That's wild. Has anybody in the comment section actually been there? Just to be like, I've been there. That's cool. Two states in the U.S. don't share borders with any other U.S. states. Do you know which ones? If you the thought ones of Hawaii edge. and Alaska, huh, you're right. 
but they would still. Though Alaska does have a neighbor. This is a big difference from Missouri and Tennessee, each with a whopping eight neighboring states. Ooh. Missouri is surrounded by Iowa, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. Tennessee is surrounded by Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Whoa. <laughs> Mississippi, <laughs> Arkansas, and Missouri. Missouri and Tennessee sound like rather cozy locations. Number one, Texas is bigger than it's you can so imagine. It's so big. It is so now, big. In New York City, the city stretches upward to make room for the 8.6 million inhabitants. If the world's population lived in such a condensed manner, they would only cover 250,404 square miles. Since Texas is 268,597 square miles, it means that, hypothetically speaking, the world's population of 7.53 billion people could all fit in the state of Texas. That's Squashy. seriously impressive for one state, though it might be a bit crowded. I bet, Texas I bet. would be a prime spot for holding the world's future reunions. So, tell us, Brightsiders, has this given you a good reason to take out your suitcase and travel to a U.S. state? Wow, that was super interesting. I learned loads of things that I did not know before. Oh, we're gonna have the world reunion in Texas. I really don't like people touching me with their arms and their elbows. It's just a me thing though. I mean, if we're gonna have to have the world reunion, it should probably not be based on my preferences. That seems a little self-centered. No, that was super interesting though. I am curious what you guys think about that mountain versus volcano versus under the sea thing, because uh, it might be a little cheat. Also, the river that looks suspiciously like a lake. Although, I wonder what the definition between a lake and a river is. <laughs> A couple of lovely shout outs today from my Patreon community. First up, we have Brian Ediger, who wants to shout out all the first responders and hospital staff. Brian says, thank you for giving up time with family and risking your life and health all in service to your communities. Thank you so much, Brian. Our second shout out today comes from Eric and it goes out to Jane Goodall. He says it's her 89th birthday, so wishing her a very happy birthday wherever she is in the world. Happy birthday, Jane. Thank you so much, Eric. And last but not least, we have a shout out from Jason to fellow patron Eric for his leadership in helping me get established on Twitch this month. Yes, I've started streaming. He says Eric has covered everything from technological issues to the terminology of the platform. He's been a guiding light as we navigate a new frontier. Thank you so much, Eric, and thank you, Jason. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye. Hi, how are you? Would you like a snack? I thought he knew the word snack. I like snacks. I'm gonna eat greenies and dental sticks and biscuits. Oh my God, he's not moving. I'm gonna eat chicken. I'm gonna eat cheese. Is it because I'm not looking at him, do you think? And treats. So chewy. Oh, because he didn't know they were for him. Oh, that makes a lot of sense.